Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, Wooden Railway Adventures, Episode 182, It's Good to Be Bell. The Sodor Search and Rescue Center had recently welcomed two new engines to its fleet. Their names were Bell and Flynn, and both were eager to please their new controller, Sir Topham Hatt. Welcome to the Sodor Search and Rescue Center team, he boomed one morning. I trust that you both aspire to be really useful engines, is that correct? Yes, sir, confirmed Bell and Flynn at the same time. Sir Topham Hatt smiled. Excellent, he said proudly. I will be giving you both a trial for the next week or two to see how you fit in here with the search and rescue team. As of right now, I only have the need for one fire engine. But if you both impress me, I have no quarrels about keeping you both. Good luck. Sir Topham Hatt walked away and Bell and Flynn looked anxiously around. So this is the search and rescue center, gasped Flynn. It's even bigger than I imagined, said Bell. Welcome to the team, shouted Captain. The Sodor search and rescue center is a wonderful place to work. Indeed, agreed Butch. We're all one big family here, and we're eager to see what you two will add to the team. Don't worry, chuckled Flynn. I was born to fight fires. I'll show you all. You'll see. Well, actually, said Harold, being a part of the search and rescue team is not just about fighting fires. Granted, it gets really hot in the summer right now, and fires do happen. But we're also on call if anyone needs help regardless of the reason. Belle couldn't help but smile. This sounds like a fun place to work, she said. Yeah, agreed Flynn. Let's go fight some fires. And he raced away. Okay, chuckled Captain. Somebody's eager to get started. For the rest of the day, Butch led the two new engines around the island to show them about. They ended their tour at the docks that evening. So that's the entire island of Sodor, concluded Butch. Now that you know where everything is, we can get started with the fun stuff tomorrow. Bell and Flynn were overjoyed at the prospect of helping out wherever they were needed. The next day, the engines were ready to begin their training. First things first, said Rocky. It doesn't matter who gets to go to the rescue. It just matters that we get there as fast as we can and do the best we can. Suddenly, the alarm sounded from the fire station. It appears there's a small fire at the Sodor Sweet Shop, shouted Harold. Who wants to go with me? I do, I do, exclaimed Flynn, and he sped away before anyone could actually reply. Okay, said Harold. I guess it's Flynn and me at the Sodor Sweet Shop. Don't worry, Belle. I'm sure something will come up soon. All right, sounds good, smiled Belle. She was very eager for her first rescue. Slowly but surely, the day passed and Belle still hadn't moved. Flynn was running all over Sodor on roads and rails and was saving the day everywhere he went. Belle was beginning to feel quite useless. Here's a call, shouted Butch. There's something going on at the scrapyard. You want to take this one, Belle? At last, I get to do some work, she exclaimed, and quickly hurried away. But when Belle arrived at the scrapyard, she realized that the emergency wasn't as important as she originally thought. What seems to be the problem, she asked around. Well, said Reg, I think my crane arm is a little loose. I'm concerned that I'll lift up a heavy piece of scrap metal and it's going to break. Belle was confused on what to do. Okay, she murmured. So, do you want me to spray some water on it? No, that will make it rust, complained Reg. Um, how about I move these cars out of the way in case something bad happens? No, I need these to stay here. Edward is going to take them away soon. Uh, how about I... Set everything on fire and then hose it down? What are you even talking about? asked Reg. Sorry, said Bell. I'm a fire engine. There's not a whole lot I can do beyond that. Oh, well, thanks for your help anyway, said Reg. I think I can manage. 
Belle took a deep breath and sighed. It had turned out to be a lousy day. I guess I'll go back to work, said Reg. Whoa, whoa, oh, I knew this was going to happen. Belle, Belle, I actually need some help now. But Belle had already puffed away. That night, everyone at the search and rescue center had gathered around to hear about Flynn's exciting day. And as soon as I get done helping rescue the kitten out of Henry's wishing tree, he continued, I get a call that the elephant at the animal park needs to be hosed down due to the heat. So what do I do? I hop off the rails and take the quickest road there. And not a moment too soon. That elephant would have been in trouble if I hadn't arrived that quickly. And then all of the people on the train started taking pictures of me, and there was no way I was going to leave in the middle of all that. While Flynn went on and on about his exciting day, Belle was left feeling slightly bitter. She had gotten all of the boring jobs while Flynn was on his way to becoming the star of the railway. Maybe there isn't a need for me to be here, she thought to herself. Sir Topham Hatt said he only needed one fire engine, and Flynn is clearly better than I am. It looks like I'll be regulated to scrapyard assistant if I'm lucky. The next day, Flynn was rearing and ready to go as soon as the first call came in. Flynn, I appreciate your enthusiasm, said Captain, but I want to see what Bell can do in an emergency situation this time. You want to take this one, Bell? But Bell was feeling depressed. No thanks, she murmured. I'm not feeling well. No worries, Belle, said Flynn. I'll do enough work for the both of us. I'm off to save the day. And Flynn raced away as fast as he could. Everyone was very surprised that Belle turned down the offer, but she was in no mood to explain why. Just then, another call came in with an emergency at the docks. That's strange, said Butch. Flynn was just on his way to the docks. Something pretty serious must be going on there. Belle, we really need your help, urged Rocky. Will you go see what the matter is? Belle noticed that her new friends really cared about her. I suppose I could, she said, smiling. Excellent, said Harold, and it will be my pleasure to escort you there. With his propellers buzzing and her fire burning bright, Harold and Belle raced to the docks. When they arrived, they were shocked at the mess. Cranky had accidentally dropped a package full of dynamite onto the ground, and Flynn had come in too hot on the road and overshot the track, knocking down some coal and fuel cars in the process. Clear the area, shouted the dockmaster. This is a catastrophe waiting to happen. Telephone the main line, said Arthur. Let them know that the docks will be permanently closed until further notice. This is going to cause a significant amount of confusion and delay, said Salty sadly. Don't worry, said Belle. Let me see if I can help. Very carefully, she shunted the remaining cars away from the crash site and applied her brakes slowly, determined not to let any potential sparks jumpstart the blaze. Then she zoomed forward and kicked the package of dynamite into the ocean. It had been risky, but the fiery crisis was averted. Well done, Belle, shouted Cranky. You handled that flawlessly. It looked pretty amazing from the sky, agreed Harold. You have a talent for this sort of thing. Even Flynn, who was embarrassed at having messed up, congratulated his teammate. Job well done, he said smiling. I think we'll make a great team, don't you think? Agreed, said Belle. There's no way Sir Topham Hatt can separate us now. You may be Fiery Flynn, but it's certainly good to be Belle, don't you think? And the rest of the engines at the docks had to agree. <laughs>